of times and things like that. But we think of like our subjective personal experience in our life as separated from our ancestors that came before us and like they're gone and what happened to them doesn't matter. <laughs> so could you give me a perspective on on that, that it's all one continuum and and how we can you know, create a punctuation mark in our healing and, and awakening to actually change the trajectory of our family line. Before we came into this particular incarnation, we were looking at all of these different potential parents that were going to satisfy, vibrationally satisfy what it is that we were looking for in this life. Of course, karma plays a role in this, but we're going to leave that out for the present moment. So I want you to imagine that you're sitting there with this capacity to perceive all of that line that potentially extends from mom and all of that line that that potentially extends from dad, right? Because you're, you're not just looking at one parent or one parental connection. Most people, if I was going to throw it an average, you're looking at about anywhere between four and 60 potential parents for whatever experience that they want to have on earth, right? Part of the recipe of what you're looking for are those traits that are running through lines. So you put so much energy and emphasis into what family lines you are going to come into and at what time. You are, by coming into this specific life, inheriting all of that. You're not just coming in being like, oh, this is going to be a one-off life. You're literally saying, I'm going to join my consciousness with that stream that is still going. So literally the first person who is in your line, let's pretend there's a first, okay? The first person who is in your line is still alive. That person is still alive in you. So when you are looking at things in terms of ancestry, it's actually, it reads like a being who has been living for a very long time. And there are aspects of that consciousness that pop in and out of existence, those being individuals, of course. So you are literally, assuming you don't have kids yet, you are the farthest point in the progression of the consciousness of that family line. It's literally an organism. It will look like that on a non-physical level. So you're essentially, everything you do in your life is essentially the expansion path for your family. And it doesn't matter whether you're adopted, doesn't matter whether you don't like your family, you cannot divorce them. It's not possible. It's what you chose into. And you chose into this not only to pull those very strong elements of mastery and talent through you because you knew that that would assist your particular choice for this life, whether it is, you know, a career you were meant to have or you know, something that you were meant to do, right? Usually is what people are choosing based off of. You also wanted to take those detrimental patterns, which are themselves running through that family line and alter them. So as to essentially progress the family more, more, better, better, further, further. You're, you're like really up an alley of one of my favorite things to look at ever. You can see that I'm like perked right up on this concept. I right? love it. This is one of my favorite things to look at in the universe. Of course, it overwhelms people. Why? Yeah. Because you possess every memory of every ancestor that has ever come before you. It is inside your body. This is living history. This is not just a story about something that happened once. This is literally that still embodied and still alive. Well, it's kind of an intergenerational Russian dolls, right? Yeah. It's like your great, 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 great is down in the center of that doll ad infinitum. Yes, and it's part of the But ego. we only see this as like, oh, this is me and my life, and they're not part of this experience. They're exactly. all part of us. They are, and that's part of the ego. Right. <laughs> it's also, you know, it's what's, so good. you know what's cool about it too? I find that it's... Um, it helps me feel less victimized yeah. by the dysfunction of my family. Why? Because you can see it running through multiple generations. Yeah. Yeah. And also the fact that you mentioned that I actually chose the circumstances of this whole game because it afforded me, this is the way I see it at least, it afforded me um, the perfect template to do what I wanted to do here for myself and also for them. Yes. Yes. Right. And, and I know that for sure in my family and my, you know, some members of my family have come on board with this, but there's definitely a, a transition point when I found myself and got on this path that my family line went like whoosh, and totally split in an opposite direction of dysfunction and sickness and sadness and suffering. It's just like whoosh, shit changed. So hopefully, you know, we can have a kid and 
And that will um, be a further manifestation of that. But my little brother just had a kid. He's on the path. His kid is going to have a totally different... I mean, we all have our traumas, right? But not in the way that like... Not in the way that we had in the past and going back through, you know, my family. And I think you've talked about this too as as a tool is actually research, researching your ancestry, right? Oh, Which yeah. is something I've interviewed my parents and recorded. I mean, I've interviewed them on video and like had it transcribed because I want to know about my great aunt, whatever that was raped and was, you know, husband was a vet of this war. Like I'm putting all those pieces together to try to create a composite so that I know what direction I want to go to take our lineage toward wholeness. Oh, you're killing me today. This is like the best news ever. What's your take on that? Like, the, you know, and some people obviously you mentioned are adopted. Like some people are going to have access to less or more information. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, you know, my mom knows much more about her side of the family than my dad knows about his, for example. But still worthwhile oh. as a venture to find out whatever you can and start to piece it together, right? You'd be surprised how much you can find. If you decide to act like a CIA agent or an FBI agent and decide you're going to go after the information and not just limit yourself to your family. I mean, there are people all over the world who have the information you're looking for. It's about where might that be? It's about being really proactive about hunting it down. And this is like a Easter egg hunt where, you know, you pick up an e one of those Easter eggs, which is a, a bit of information, right? And it's like absolutely mind blowing. This might be a bit of information that changes your entire narrative about yourself and the people you thought you knew. You know, this bit of information is like super horrifying and oh my gosh, I can see that aspect in myself. Oh, that's where I got it from. Now what do I do with this? You know, another bit of information is like, oh my gosh, I feel so much pride almost. And it will definitely give you a sense of the specialness of human life. I'll tell you that. It's really good for people who are struggling with a sense of meaning in their individual lives to understand just how much effort went into the creation of you. It is mind-blowing. It's millisecond interactions that either happened or didn't happen add up to you either being here or not being here. And wow. then like all of these struggles that all these people went through and now you're here living this type of life. And it's like, you know, to, to take your life for granted is to turn around and flip them all off. Even people who are deeply disconnected from incredibly dysfunctional families who they hate, when they find out this information, not just about the people they had interaction with, but the people before them stretching back through time, it creates this kind of, oh my gosh, I'm the one carrying the baton. You know, <laughs> right? <laughs> what did my great grandfather die and live for? No pressure, but I think I'm probably not going to be playing as many video games. You know? Right, right. <laughs>